so these are sequence and series and into upsc we do have into slavers the convergence and divergence of infinite series so for discussing hello aspirants good afternoon and welcome to plutus ias i hope everyone is doing good so in this this lecture what we are going to do we are discussing the summary of convergence and divergence of infinite series why i, I have selected this topic because upsc without fail ask every time a question from this one and sometime it would be 15 markers sometime it would be 20 markers so that is very important from the perspective of maths optional and that is upsc means or you can say this topic is low hanging fruit you would be covering this one and you will find out that there are lot of questions there are lot of the things that you would find out for practice but you can summarize it on one page i will show, show you how that we can sub- summarize then this but starting from the basics what is the definitions of sequence sequence is a function whose domain remains a natural number set and codomain can be anything so that means if domain is natural number then it must be having infinite number of values for which function would be defined and that is why whenever you would be considering any of the sequence then it would be having infinite terms and if you would be clubbing these infinite number of terms by addition then that sequence would be giving you as result of into a series let me explain this with an example say this is a n what is this 1 by n that is how we do write sequences and this is a sequence why i am saying this one because if you would be putting different different values of your function n then it would be giving you different different values for instance for n is equal to 1 this would be 1 for n is equal to 2 it would be 1 by 2 for n is equal to 3 it would be 1 by 3 and so on so this is a sequence and if we have to write series out of this one then what we need to do series notation would be this format sometime we do write n is equal to 1 to infinity and then add these terms this would be 1 plus 1 by 2 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 and so on so these are sequence and series and into upsc we do have into slavers the convergence and divergence of infinite series so for discussing or for finding out whether a given series is convergent or divergent we do have four to five tests and i would try to summarize them together and i would to try to implement these tests maximum of these tests under one example only so let's see that what kind of tests are there these are the tests dl inverse ratio test is there and into dl inverse ratio test what we need to find out nth term divided by n plus 1th term and then take the limits that is limit n approaches to infinity an over an plus 1 if it is equal to l then depending upon this limits value we will see whether the sequence is convergent or divergent sorry series so if l is greater than 1 then the series converges if l is less than 1 then the series diverges and if l is equal to 1 then the series this test fails to give any result corresponding to the series second test we do have cosis root test why we do have second test if this is there the thing is dl inverse ratio test that we prefer when we do have involvement of factorial into the series that is a nth term that of the series that contains some of the terms where factorial is involved for instance you may be having the series n factorial over n plus 1 if series is of this type then we do prefer your dl inverse ratio test but sometimes you may find out the series which are of the type that their an is n raised to power n over something you can say n plus 1 raised to power n if you do have some such series where there is involvement of power n then we prefer cosis root test and what is cosis root test here you have to do 
limit n approaches to infinity a n raised to power 1 by n then find out this limit and say this is equal to l if l is less than 1 then the series is convergent if l is greater than 1 then the series would be divergent and if l is equal to 1 then the result is inconclusive we can't say anything either you have to follow some other result or you have to check the convergence and divergence of the series manually then if we have seen that L is equal to 1 is something where test fails. So I have told you that how you would be finding out by referring to some other test. And some other test here is Rabe's test that you would be using after failure of the Alembert's ratio test. So what we need to do? See this is a bigger version of this one. So subtract 1 from this one, multiply by n and take the limit. That limit n approaches to infinity n into a n over a n plus 1 minus 1 and say this limit is equal to l if l is greater than 1 the series is convergent if l is less than 1 it is divergent and again it fails if l is equal to 1 but be cautious about the thing that Rayway's test is applicable only if there is no involvement of e into this series or you can say into this limit but if E is involved and your D-Alembert's ratio fails, then what we are going to do? We need to apply a logarithmic test. And what we need to do here? See, are this test failed and this is logarithmic test? Log, the name itself suggests that you have to do something with log. So take the log of this one and multiply that by n and take the limit. Again, we will be saying that this limit is L check the conditions condition remains same that whatever condition we had under the d'alembert's ratio test they are same for your logarithmic test Rayway's test and the next day that is d morgan and bartrand's test and if this test again fails for l is equal to one then what we will be doing we will do do find out limit of this one and how you will would be finding out this one do nothing start from here that is the failure of Rayway's Rayway's test subtract 1 and multiply by log n and say this is equal to l then if l is greater than 1 the series is convergent less than 1 the series is divergent and if l is equal to 1 again the test fails but how to apply this you would be like mesmerized by all the results together and must be confused at some time that ma'am you have told all of them together then how to apply let's see by an example here the example is 1 square by 2 square plus 1 square into 3 square and so on. That is the series. First thing that we need to find out a n. And how you would be writing a n? See 1 square, 3 square, 5 square. So ultimately you are getting nth term. This is 1, 3, 1, 3, 5 and this is what? A Z P. And nth term of A Z P can be written as? a plus n minus 1 into d and here a is 1 n minus 1 d is 2 so it is 2 n minus 1 so we can write 1 square 3 square 5 square and 2 n minus 1 square divided by 2 square 4 square up to 2 n square and what we need to check a n over a n plus 1 that to limit n approaches to infinity and if you would be doing that then it would be 1 square 3 square 5 square 2 n minus 1 square over up to 2 n square and how you would be doing divided by 2 n plus 1 so 1 square 3 square 5 square and 2n minus 1, 2n plus 1. These would be cancelled and we are left with 2n plus 2 square divided by 2n plus 1 square. And here we do have x raised to power n. This would be 1 by x only and 1 by x so if you do find out limit n approaches to infinity 
then it would be limit n approaches to infinity if i do take n common the highest power of m common from numerator and denominator then we will be getting 1 by x and dl amorts ratio test says that if this is our l so it would be convergent if 1 by x is greater than 1 that is l is l is greater than 1 that means x is less than 1 convergent and 1 by x is less than 1 then it would be divergent that means x is greater than 1 so it is divergent and test fails for x is equal to 1 so that is how you would be performing these results and that's it stay continued for more results thank you